heading west along the M4. It's 5 past 8, it's about 8am. It's a beautiful spring day. You can see the road's got lots and lots of repairs happening. I'm trying to make it wider, cater for the growing city that we live in. You can see around that Sydney still has a lot of land, a lot of patches of earth that can be turned into houses and shops, car parks. No doubt that's what they'll all end up in my lifetime. All this area on the left here goes on and on. Such an enormous city, the city of Sydney. I think we're heading towards about 7 million people. Spread out from from Palm Beach in the northeast down to Cronulla in the southeast. We'll say out to Campbelltown in the southwest. And all the way up to out to Penrith and Richmond, Windsor. the northwest. That'd be a fairly long day ride if you were to ride that to those uh, extreme corners of Sydney. From the mountains to the coast it's over 50 kilometres. From Campbelltown to Richmond. I'm guessing it'll be in the vicinity of 60, 70 kilometres. Such an enormous place. Really difficult place to get around if you don't have your own transport. BMW. Oh, someone's lost their backpack. Might be an opportunity to talk about this bike, the ZZR600. It's a full fairing sports bike back in its day, now classified as a sports touring bike. It's got quite an upright position. I'm a tall guy, six foot four, 193 centimetres tall. The reach to the bars is really comfortable. The wind protection, really good on the legs, a little bit of buffeting on the head. Even if I crouch down here a little bit, still quite a bit of buffeting coming in around the below, below this screen. Pretty sure it's an aftermarket screen, I don't know, I've only had the bike for a few months. Up here you got fresh wind, no buffeting. Here, buffeting on my chin, right on the GoPro. That's something I'd like to change. Maybe a slightly different angle on that screen or an extension on the top of it or something. 600cc engine. Don't have a lot to compare it to. The last road bi bike that I rode before, this one was a Yamaha R1 1999 model, same year as this. And obviously in comparison, this is a toy compared to a beast. Very linear and smooth power delivery, very easy to ride. Felt comfortable as soon as I rode it. Little bit cramped in the legs, but I am tall. Seat, I'm not a fan of the seat at the front of the seat seems to put a lot of pressure on the old crown jewels down there and um, that's probably my biggest gripe with the bike it's a heavy old tank for its size it's not the most tippable bike in the world I find that I have to use a bit of counter steering sometimes in corners to get around there getting the bike over. That's not a problem though. I'm enjoying that. A 
it doesn't have any scary power that would put off a new rider I wouldn't imagine it's just the weight of the bike if you're a new rider I'd, I'd suggest getting something much more upright much more uh, e easy to ride something that's not quite as heavy just so when you put your foot down you know with confidence you're not going to tip the bike over that's in top gear no it wasn't fifth gear just pulling from 90 to 110 it doesn't take much of a twist of the wrist I'm curious about how it might perform on a track day if you've got any idea leave a comment below let me know if you've got a ZZR ZXR something of this vintage 20 year oldish bike BMW g'day mate would you take it on a track day I know the brakes are not great I've got to give it a good fistful to stop it up it does have twin discs on the front the twin pots but it still feels spongy it only has rubber rubber lines I'm wondering if a braided braided lines might give it that little bit more uh, bite in the front brakes rear brake too seems to feel you really got to stomp on it stop here on red arrow otherwise proceed with care all right that's care are these bikes the cheapest chips I'm a returning rider after a bit of a break from bikes while the kids grew up from kindergarten to high school now that they're both in high school I can afford to treat myself to ride to work so I can justify having a bike it gets ridden almost every single day absolutely addicted to riding I'm not a very experienced road rider in the scheme of things compared to all you guys out there I'm not a boy racer I've never done a track day I've never got my knee down I've never done wheelies on road bikes had a couple of old crappy trail bikes back in the day nothing powerful just fun farm bikes I've got the bug though I've got the wife interested I think I might be able to upgrade to a bike in a year or so's time so if I can keep this one for a year I'll be really happy I do have my eyes on the MT-09 the Yamaha especially the Tracer because I would like to do some touring and I would like to do a track day or two in the future the other bike that seems to fit the bill is the Bandit 1250 or 1200 seem to have lots of power both of those bikes do have questionable suspension from all the reviews that I've read if anyone wants to go for a ride has either of those bikes and is willing to let me have a go have a swap and have a ride of something a bit older and <laughs> uh, just as much fun that would be fantastic absolutely would I love to have a go on other bikes I'm in the western suburbs of Sydney so if anyone wants to hook up for a ride one day leave a comment below send me a PM I know there's a Kawasaki ride coming up on the 6th of next month 6th of October starting from Campbelltown heading up to well, where we are right now along this road and heading up the putty through to the old road the old highway and then back south to Sydney again I'm tempted to go on that ride it is a big day ride and I have to work in the evening so I'm not sure whether I'll be able to manage it or not mm. 
So back to the ZZR600. Speed is not a problem. I've seen videos of other people riding these things up to approximately 250 kilometers per hour. I think on public roads, there's no way in the world I'm going to be able to test whether this one can reach 250 kilometers per hour. My previous motorcycle nine years ago was a Yamaha XS 1100, 1983 model. Shaft drive, big heavy beast, suspension like a boat. Well, this is much sportier in comparison. I think just as quick. The XS 1100 has claimed the title of being the first production bike to do 11 second quarter mile stock. Uh, was used by a lot of police forces around the world as police bikes. Pretty fun machine. At least for me it was. <laughs> My bike before that was a Yamaha XT250 road trail. My child bike was a 1969 model. Suzuki TM75, two stroke. That was the bike I learned how to ride on. One down, three up, four speed. 75 cc's of raw power. Top speed, 65 kilometers per hour. Had a lot of fun on that bike. Crashed it many times. When I finally said goodbye, I used to have to take the spark plug out and clean it up, clean the oil off the spark plug just to get it to start. It had no rear brake, no clutch, and I still rode it like, <laughs> like a screaming banshee. No, I wasn't that good. I still rode that bike whenever I could. So motorcycling has been in my blood since I was about five years old. I've just never been a serious biker. G'day buddy. Now that I'm a bit older and have been working for a long time, I can actually put some money into it. I can afford to ride. It feels really good. love to get a dedicated off-road bike. It's something I'm thinking about. It's something I need to talk to my wife about. <laughs> I was looking in bikes at a bike shop a few weeks ago. And the salesman had a really good line that I think I'd heard many years before but hadn't really taken it on board until now and he said apology is easier than permission <laughs> it did make me smile all right well I've forgotten the name of the road that I'm meant to turn on That was a donkey, wasn't it? That was a, a very nice looking donkey. As far as donkeys go. Reminds me of that, that movie, The Animal. That is quite funny with the goat.